Hello, experts. Once again, welcome to this episode of the Rock Diagnostics podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about pneumatic tube systems. If you've ever been in um, countries where they have uh, drive throughs at the bank, where you go and then you sort of place the money in a small box and then you put it in to a long tubing system and then someone presses a button inside and then all of a sudden it gets ejected and then it goes inside the bank. That's what a pneumatic tube system is. For those of you who are watching and who may not know what, I, what I'm even talking about, listen to this and then probably you'll get a better idea of what these are and how these could be used in a hospital setting and why it could be important and how it could make your work a lot more efficient. To talk about this topic, we're here to do today with Augusta George Omori, a medical laboratory scientist from Nigeria, and I'm going to let her present herself in a couple of seconds. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. All right, thanks a lot okay. for Okay, um, I can okay. Yeah, go ahead. You can present yourself. All right. I'm Jojo Mari Ogusa. I'm a medical laboratory scientist from Nigeria. I am currently serving. Now, those who do not know what that is, it's a thing we do after school here in Nigeria for a year. We save the country. You... Yeah. Um, you go to like the rural areas, some some urban areas also, just to like let people benefit from what you've acquired in school. That's basically mm-hmm. what it's all about. That's just a very brief summary of who I am. So it's as a result of um, working after your service that you came in contact with some of the pneumatic tube systems. No, no, I came a, I came across it while in school. My the, my university had it. The hospital had it. Okay. Our university hospital had pneumatic tube system, and I was very intrigued by it. So yeah, I want the world to know yeah. more about it because it can make life lots easier. Yeah. What but, intrigued you about about it? What is it, and then what intrigued you about it? Okay, for those who have um, visited, visited the federal hospitals in Nigeria, we know just how tedious and stressful it is taking samples from where they are to where they need to be. But what's interesting about this um, system is that it's it's fast and the, um, the stress is reduced in the sense that from where you are, the sample can be just imputed into the system and then it's on its own through pressure sent directly to where it needs to be without you having to leave that leave where you are. Currently mm-hmm. and yeah. So I think what I understood is um, it's uh, sort of a tubing system, right? So you said there's pressure on one side, and so yes, it is. you put your sample in there, and then it travels to the other yes. side. Now, yes, exactly. It's how exactly. are the samples protected? But I'm thinking if they are very high speeds, let's say you have a blood sample, uh, like should you be scared that maybe it's going to get hemolyzed or anything is going to happen to the sample? Like what happens exactly? No, no. The thing is that if it's calib- it can be calibrated. So before, while it's being installed, it's calibrated in such a way that it's it's um the speed is perfect. It's done in such a way that the um the speed wouldn't be able to affect the sample. Like it does not it does not interrupt the integrity of the sample. So yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. rest assured that the sample that's left here is, is the same sample that's going to get to where it's going to without any hemolysis or anything being wrong with it. Right. You, can, you can always adjust the speed to match. The sample that's being sent. Okay, so that means when you're sending it through, you, depending on the sample you have, you can adjust the speed to make sure that your sample doesn't get affected. Like the speeds, uh, are they standardized or does it depend on, were you given like specific speeds that you had to uh, respect based on the kind of sample you put in the system or how did it happen? No, it's it's from installation that the speed the, the speed's calibrated. So they know they know um this, they, okay there's like a range they know exactly what the speed that would affect the sample so just have to ensure that it's not faster than yeah. it um just, so when when it's being calibrated that they do it such a way that it's not affect the samples that they know would eventually have to pass through the tube system. Yeah. All right. So just quickly, just really briefly, uh, the one you used. If let's say we had to compare the amount of time it would take you to lo- walk from the lab to where the samples are collected and using the system what was the difference so how long would it take you to walk to that place and how long would it take you to just put it in the system and then have it get over to you the system just like a matter of seconds matter right. of seconds but if i had to walk down it take me about five minutes or more oh wow okay so that's actually pretty quick and some people would say that's good for sports a little bit like walking around <laughs> <laughs> but then i guess if you're in a medical lab and then <laughs> If patients' lives depend on you. An emergency situation. Exactly. Yes. Then things need to go really, really quickly. And was it hard to use? So yes. how was the sample? How do, is there any particular way you have to package the sample? Or what sort of contraption do you put it into? Okay, so the the um 
tube comes with a canister. It's like a tube, a hollow tube, that has, which has its own foam inside. So you just bring out, you open the tube, the canister, mm -hmm. and bring out this um, foam. I don't, I won't call it foam, like packets. So you just put your sample, your sample tubes inside the inside this like pack. You roll it back, put it in the tube, and then you send it. So it's preserved inside the canister. At the very beginning, you said you really liked the uh, pneumatic tube system. It made your job a lot easier. As you said, it's good in states of emergency yes. where you need the sample to get to the laboratory relief fast because the testing needs to be done. The results can be sent back to the medical doctor and they can help so that that can help save a patient's life. Now, do you have any idea as far as um, costs for putting such a system? Like, is it something that any lab could put in place? How much is it something that's extremely expensive to put in place? Or extremely, it's, it's expensive to put in place. Okay, as last time I researched, it was about 53 million naira and the um, size of the hospital also determine just how costly a trip is going to be. Yeah, so I guess it's something that's going to be a bit more adapted to large labs. I mean, which makes sense because if you're in a smaller lab and you can just walk a couple of seconds, get your sample and come, yes. you're not going to be put in a pneumatic tube system. But I guess the bigger the lab is and the bigger, the bigger the hospital is, the more it makes sense. To install one. I think maybe it would even make sense. To put the bigger the hospital, the bigger the price. So I guess probably in almost any public hospital, it would make sense to have something of that nature. Because public hospitals are a lot bigger. And I guess yes. also it's the um, government that's in charge. And so maybe the funding is more available to install that. Now, aside from where you work. I, I advise public hospitals to do that. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, was saying I, I advise federal and public hospitals to do that because to make life a lot easier for both the staffs and the patient and their relatives. And have you seen those installed in lots of places? Aside from where you worked. Do you know of any other places where they have this sort of system installed? In, in the U.S., in Nigeria, no. Just that's the place I know about it in Nigeria. But um, in the U.S., mm -hmm. in the U.S., yeah, some major hospitals, some major hospitals have it installed. I'm trying to remember the name. Now, I think this can. Some major hospitals in the U.S. have it. Okay, so bigger hospitals. So yeah, so like we were saying, you need to be slightly bigger yeah. in order to be able to afford this sort of system. In the hospital, aside from you. How did other people react to it? Because in our hospitals, in some cases, I don't know when you were there, I don't know whether it had been installed a long time before or if it was something new, but sometimes in our hospitals, in our clinics, um, people who are older, who have more experience, who are used to doing things a certain way, sometimes are not really willing to get um, into the newer technologies. How did things happen over there? Was it easy to get people to accept it or were there some holdovers? Were there some people that didn't really want to get it to go into that direction. Okay, the way I was, the people there accepted it because it made life a lot easier. And it also it also helps for um, much more better results results. Okay. So everybody loved it there. Better results in what sense? How? What sense that that's some that's some that's some um tests that are time time limited like the earlier you get it done the better. And uh, okay, so you know in federal hospitals here in Nigeria, most times patients relatives or patients themselves are giving their samples to take to the lab. And within that time when they are giving the sample, when it goes to the lab, anything can happen. Some people spill the samples and just think, okay, they wouldn't know. Because maybe they have two bottles, EDT and lichen heparin. They might just pour from the lichen heparin into the EDTS container and bring it. We'll give other results, but it will not be efficient. But since here, yeah, it's the it's not been the result, the sample is not being tampered with. We are mm -hmm. sure that, okay, whatever we're giving to you, is the right is the right result because that's what I mean by better results. All right, so yeah, so it allows you to get the samples a lot faster on time, so that if there's any sort of reaction, adverse reaction that may occur in the sample that would give you false results, then the amount of time for that problem to really yes. expand to really cause any sort of issue is reduced, and so you have a better. You are more confident in the kinds of results that you obtain at the end of the day. Now, the system, was it only used for lab samples or was it placed in such a way that you went to different places of the hospital and you could put different kinds of things in there? It can be used for all things, for pharmacy, lab, even administrative, just send documents. So it's not just for the lab only. Oh, okay. So people also use it to send papers and documents from one place to the other. Yes, it can be used for, it's just like a, tra a transport system, basically, for all anything. All right. Important. Now, you... 
one thing you you did say that this is something that you've only seen in the place where you were uh did you kind of ask around and then get information as to why that is how they were able to make it happen there even though in other places it's not something that can be easily found okay i schooled it was a private the private school so Oh. I think there was a bit of funding, and this hospital is associated with John. It's associated with John Hopkins, so I'm going to assume that's where the fund may also have come from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, I see what you mean. So there must have been a bit more funding, and also it's associated with John Hopkins. I guess the standard of care that they are looking for is also something that's pretty high, and so as a result, and the. Was there some research also that occurred in the lab or was it just purely medical science, uh, commercial medical science? As I then when I was there, it was just purely um, commercial medical science. So I'm not really sure what is going on now. Yeah. It's been a while since I left. That sounds pretty interesting because usually when you get funding from these institutions, it's to try and implement a bit more things on the research side also. Actually, it's interesting to know that this was purely medical science. It was purely mostly to help the students and also to help the potential patients that came there at that period in time. Concerning these systems, is there anything else that you think we should know or the public should know in general? Anything else you want to share? Can, are, you, are you with me? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. I was just saying that what I really want the public to know is that it's fast. It's simple, it's reliable, and it's efficient so for better, so for more better results and to, to, to reduce turnaround time. It's very reliable. Okay, so thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us about that today. At least we we're able to learn a bit more about these systems and how they are used in the medical sector. Um, I had seen them used in the banking sector in the past, but not really in the medical sector. So it's interesting to know that it's something that's adaptable and that's also usable. Hopefully, people who are watching this amongst them will be individuals who have taste some pool with public hospitals, probably in Nigeria, and would, maybe they should start thinking about how to implement this to try and help their workers and also their patients and to ensure that they get better results and so that their results are a lot more timely than they have been in the past. Uh, if anyone wants to get in contact with you to talk a bit more about this topic, where should they go through? What platforms? They can contact me on email, um, email, email um, Instagram, or most of my email. Like, if you want to, or maybe the Instagram. And it's Augusta15. Okay. Yeah, okay. Augusta15, that's my Instagram. Then my email, augusta15 at gmail.com. O-G-H-O-S-A-15. Right. Okay, once again, thanks a lot for taking the time to be here with us today. Hopefully, next time you'll come back, you are going to Thank have you for finished with me. your service, and then you are going to have finished with everything else. And you'll come and tell us about the wonderful experience you're having as a medical laboratory scientist in your new place of work. Thank, Thank you very you. much for having me. See you next time.